You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You straight gangsters over here, Drake man. Drake gangsters. Uh. Uh, 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 yeah. yeah, welcome back. You are listening to Scout Team Radio, and we are bringing it to you hot and live this morning like we do each and every weekday morning. We come in hot at 6 a.m. and again at 11 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. We come in hot on the Barnburner Network. But before we come in hot, let me do some quick introductions. I am one of your co-hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. What? None of that is true. And the man on the other microphone, he is a great patriot. And we know him as... America. It's your boy, Chris America, coming to you live this Wednesday, February. Uh-oh, Loudbeard. Is it February 13th? Wednesday the 13th? It is Wednesday the 13th. There was a oh, scary movie man. about this day once. That's that's a spooky kind of hump day. Is that where a masked camel goes around killing teenagers at a camp lake or a lake camp? It is, and they, they usually have like a baseball bat or a hatchet or, you know, the camels, they like to carry these kind of weapons. It's I'm pretty a big fan of the machete. <laughs> the machete. It was a good movie, too. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Fun movie. It's one of those crazy, off-the-wall, gory, but fun movies. Yeah, you know what else job. is fun, Loudbeard? What else is fun, Chris America? Yeah, Loudbeard. Man, that Orlando is a great Magic. place to start. Great Orlando place to start. Orlando Magic are on a four-game winning streak. I don't know when the last time it was, but it's happening right now. The last time the Magic were on a four-game winning streak was last night. And they're six out of seven, so it's not like just this four games. They, they've been playing pretty solid the last few weeks. Now, last night's game, I'm telling you, this was a stomping an absolute, they, they, a blunt force trauma is how I would describe this, is what they did to the New Orleans Pelicans. 118 to 88, Chris America. This wasn't even close. Yeah, and the Magic seem to be pressing that a lot lately. I mean, they beat, they beat the, uh, the Bucks by 20-ish, right, if I'm not mistaken. And they beat the Atlanta Hawks around 15 to 20, somewhere around there. And now you're telling me they won by 30? Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you, man. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, this game, the other part about it, it's not just how great the Magic were doing, which they are doing great. And our All-Star here in Orlando, we like to talk about the All-Star power. We have a, I don't know if I'd go all, as far as Superstar, but we do have an All-Star on our team, Vooch. He scores 25 last night with 17 rebounds. The guy's doing it all over the court, and he leads our Orlando Magic past the Pelicans. Now, can you say, Chris America, that the big man for the New Orleans Pelicans, Anthony Davis, this top 10 player in the NBA, do you think he could play as well as our all-star, Nikola Vucevic? Do you think he can play that well? Well, um, no. He had three points, six rebounds. Three points and six rebounds. Um, now, Chris America, I said this all along, and maybe I should be the GM for the New Orleans Pelicans. Once Anthony Davis had demanded a trade, it was time to move on because if that trade didn't happen, which it ended up not happening, this is what we get left with. Do you think he's motivated to go out there on the court and play? Do you think he's wanting to put on a big show every night for the fans? He's basically going to phone it in the rest of the season. It's, it's a travesty to all the New Orleans Pelicans fans out there that want to watch good basketball. It's a travesty to his 
teammates and to that organization. You pull the trigger on the deal before the trade deadline, you get some assets, and you move on on rebuilding your squad. Now you're going to go through this painful second half of the season, which is going to be dreadful for the New Orleans Pelicans. Well, let me ask you this, Loudbeard. Let me let me let me throw this out out to you. Right now, the Pelicans are twenty five and thirty three, so they're not. It's not like they're they're going to get a high number of lottery lottery balls, but they're still going to get some lottery balls, right? Yeah, I mean they'll get a couple. I think at this point now, you you kind of want to tank, don't you? You want to get more and more lottery balls, and then you hope. What if the Pelicans can get? a nice uh, high draft pick and trade and still trade AD for even better assets than what they were going to get from the LA Lakers. Yeah. I mean, relying on the lottery when you're not in that like top four or five worst teams in the league can be kind of a struggle because you're, it's very unlikely. Now it's not impossible and it's not that it hasn't happened before, but it's very unlikely that you're going to get one of those top picks. And after the first four or five guys, usually the talent falls falls a little bit off the cliff. But I can understand the philosophy. I can understand the reasoning behind wanting to, to get that young talent in the draft and tanking. But when you have a top... Some people think he's a top five player in the NBA. I, I would make an argument that he's not top five, Anthony Davis. I would say top ten for sure. Uh, he falls out of the top five for me. I think there's five better players in the NBA than Anthony Davis. But when you have an athlete that is that well thought of in the NBA, there's no reason why your team should be that bad. And it's just it's it's the relationship here. Now all of a sudden, a guy that should be scoring more than three points in a game is going to go out there and just give you a lackluster performance like this. I don't know. It just it doesn't sit well for me. I'm a I'm a man of the people, Chris America. I love the fans of New Orleans. They're good people. They don't deserve this garbage. Um, yeah, I mean, I just don't know if they would have done any better in this situation if Anthony Davis was on the Lakers and the Lakers or the Pelicans had Kuzma, Ball, and Ingram. I just don't know that they still wouldn't have been beaten by the Magic 118 to 88. I mean, first of all, the Magic, they're a freight train right now. So they, they can't be stuffed. Second of all, I just don't know that those guys are that much better to be able to do anything about what's going on with the Pelicans. Now, I do want to ask you this, though, Loudbeard. Do you think this turns off other teams that also might want to rent out Anthony Davis? Like, Anthony Davis is kind of sending a message of, like, once again, these are the teams I want to be traded to, so the rest of the NBA better back off or they're going to get six rebounds and three points. Well, I, I think it could hurt his value in the long run if he stinks it up the rest of the season. There's still going to be a tons of suitors out there, but maybe all of a sudden the Pelicans lose that leverage, and Anthony Davis is probably okay with that. You know why? Because he's going to go to a team, and instead of that team having to trade away every asset they have just to get him, they may not have to trade away every asset. They may be able to keep some of those key players to help him out so he could go to a better team. So... What is the benefit for him to actually play well the rest of the season? I, I don't think there's any. Well, well, let me ask you another question. Does this hurt the way the public views Anthony Davis? Like, does this hurt? I don't want to say character because I feel like that's too strong of a word. But, I mean, here you have a guy. He's getting paid $20 million plus right now to play basketball. And because he didn't get his way, he's taking his ball and he's going home. I mean, that's a that's a bad look to have as a superstar. And if that is truly what he's doing, I don't know that I like that, man. No, it's a terrible look. It's a terrible look. And, again, I was talking about the New Orleans fans that I'm trying to be the people, the man of the people for. It's just all of a sudden all NBA fans are going to be like, nah, I'm not a big fan of this. Like, I don't like the bad guy persona. Like, he's he's kind of a, a nice guy, and uh, he's never done anything bad to anybody and this is going to turn him. It's kind of like the Kevin Durant persona. All of a sudden, Kevin Durant, is he's not viewed the same way as he was when he was in Oklahoma City. Now, he's kind of turned into a little bit of the heel. Just a little bit. And I think this is what's going to happen to Anthony Davis, especially if he goes to the Lakers. I mean, I think the rest of the NBA is going to be like, oh, great. Another superstar, big man, going to the Lakers. Tired of this. And the way he did it by tanking and, and playing like garbage and, and acting like a kind of 
an amateur young player over in New Orleans instead of being a, a consummate professional and going out there and actually playing and putting it out there every night for his team. Uh, the whole thing, it, it's just, I don't know. I'm just, I think it's, it's bad for the NBA and it's bad for Anthony Davis. Yeah, but Anthony Davis wasn't the only one that, to do bad last night. I mean, between him, Williams, and Okafor, they scored a combined uh, 13 points. Yeah, uh, Drew Holiday, I think, was the only like bright spot there on the Pelicans. He uh, had a him decent and, and game. Antoine Moore. Yeah. Antoine Moore scored 19. Drew Holiday scored 16. The rest, man, oof. Slim pickings there, but, I mean, that's what is to be expected when you have 88 points on the board. Yeah, and this is this is how this team's going to be, I guess, the rest of the season. Now, Anthony Davis may – this may have just been that initial game out of the out of the deadline for him to just kind of say, okay, this is – I'm proving my point. And then he might bounce back. But the Pelicans haven't really been that good all season long. They've been struggling, and this is part of the reason why Anthony Davis wants to get off this team. He just doesn't feel like this is his future. He wants to go somewhere where it's a brighter future. He can pair up with another superstar and get out of here. So I think it's time for Anthony Davis to move on, and I wish the Pelicans would have pulled the trigger because now we're getting that circus that goes along with keeping a disgruntled superstar on your team when he doesn't want to be on your, on your team. And we've seen it in the past with Carmelo and with Dwight Howard and these guys, once they want to be off of your team, it just it creates a, a super disruption the longer you keep them there. And this is what New Orleans has asked for. They wanted to keep them the rest of the season. They're going to get the circus that goes along with it. Yes, they are. And uh, Loudbeard, your Lakers, your L.A. LeBrons, they lost again last night too. So both teams involved in these trade talks not doing so good. Yeah, the L.A. LeBrons lose to a, a not-so-great Hawks team. Um, that, that's Trey putting Young, it lightly. Yes. Trey Young is, is you know, the bright, bright spot. He's that young draft pick, that, that phenomenal scorer from college that's come out. And he's put together some good performances, and he has a decent performance last night that, that helps carry his Hawks team over the Lakers. But with the talent the Lakers have, especially with LeBron, this is a team that should not be losing to the Hawks. The final score is 117 to 113. But to me, the highlight of this game is the Hawks fans. They're kind of uh, taking over what the Pacers were doing, and that's heckling Los Angeles Lakers players when they're shooting free throws. And in this night, particularly, LeBron James, the man himself, is up there at the free throw line, and the fans are out there chanting, the Hawks fans are chanting, Kobe's better as he's shooting free throws. And do you think he makes those free throws when he hears this, Chris America? Well, considering he's already a poor free throw shooter to begin with, I'm going to guess no. Absolutely not. That's right. He is, and I don't think he's actually, he's probably drowning all that noise out. And I would have played the clip for you, but it's really, really hard to hear on radio. And I don't think our listeners want to hear a, a gobbledygoo sound bite with this. But just the fact that those Hawks fans were chanting Kobe's bread better and getting into his head and he's struggling with free throws this season anyway like worse than he normally does so it was a fun little little side note of this game but yeah the Lakers they're a mess too I mean I guess this trade deadline has gotten into everybody's head Anthony Davis is struggling the Lakers are struggling and hey you know it is what it is and LeBron was asked about the chances of them not making the playoffs. And he kind of was nonchalant and was like, well, you know, if we make it, we make it. If we don't, we don't. And he just kind of brushed it off with the media. But I would say if the Lakers don't make the playoffs, that's a pretty pretty bad spot for the Los Angeles Lakers to be in when you have LeBron James on your team. Well, we kind of, I don't know if we talked about this. I remember this was a big deal when LeBron James, what was it, last week was quoted saying, you know, I, I got nothing left to prove. I'm not I don't really need to do anything more to like secure my legacy. So, you know, I'm just kinda here doing my thing, playing basketball. And now you're telling me he said, you know, if we make the playoffs we make them. If we don't, we yeah, I'm I don't care. Is, is am I reading this correctly, Loudbeard? Did yeah, this... the Lakers get an uninspired superstar? No, that's what it sounds like, right? All the writings on the wall. He doesn't I mean, maybe he's in it for the long game. Maybe he's thinking, okay, this was I knew this was going to be a tough year. 
It is what it is. Next year, when we get that second or third superstar, we'll go ahead and, and I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready. But can you turn on the eye of the tiger like that? Is this Can that happen? I, I think, I mean, there was a certain player with that wore the jersey number 23, you know, back in Chicago, you know, like in the 90s that could. But I don't think... I don't think LeBron can, no. I, we haven't seen it before. Um, we've seen this on all of his teams where if the if his team is losing or down or struggling or his, his teammates let him down, when um, J.R. Smith dribbled the ball out with time expiring instead of putting it back up and they went into overtime and you saw LeBron just had wanted nothing to do with his teammates, didn't want to inspire them to – you know, get up and let's let's take the let's go out there and win one for the Gipper. None of that. He just sat on the bench and kind of sulked over what just happened, and then they lost in overtime. So this isn't new that he gives up on his teammates, that he doesn't have that eye of the tiger. And you know, I know you're gonna say that that's probably my LeBron hate coming out, but that's just no. The way I was gonna I've say pump it. the brakes. Okay, you you are you're the LeBron hater extraordinaire but what you say has some merit and I'm gonna give you that I'm gonna give you that yeah that's probably been the knock on him that's why he hasn't won all those championships like somebody like Michael Jordan or a guy like Bill Russell who just turned 85 yesterday so happy belated birthday to Bill Russell but these guys have rings they have championships and they have that eye of the tiger and LeBron has everything it takes to get there but hasn't quite gotten over the top and you know, the Michael Jordan and LeBron argument is kind of to me like the Peyton Manning and Tom Brady argument, where Peyton Manning was the best player to get there, but once he got there, he struggled to win those championships, but he got a couple, right? Where Tom Brady, he can just fill those fingers up with rings like there's no tomorrow, and that's what Michael Jordan did. He didn't have any issue winning championships, and that's always going to be LeBron's knock, and I think part of that is that eye of the tiger. Now, Chris America, I, I didn't have this in my notes, but you bringing up Michael Jordan just made me think of this. And yesterday, we had a tease out from Memphis Spence asking which record was better, the 30 streak for James Harden when he's scoring 30 points in 30 games in a row, or Cal Ripken Jr. Now, there was another big-time sports person, not just Loudbeard and Chris America, but Michael Jordan himself was asked... What do you think of these streaks? James Harden scoring 30 points in a row in, th in 30 consecutive games and Russell Westbrook beating the record for 10 straight games with a triple-double. Do you know what Michael Jordan's response was for that, Chris America? He said, I got six championships. I got six championships. That's right, Chris America. That, to me, is impressive. He knows, he knows what it's about. I think the that's bling. the one thing I don't like about Michael Jordan is he's definitely just became this get off my lawn. I don't want to deal with these kids playing on my court. You know, nothing they do impresses me, which has to suck, especially, you know, guys that came in like the Kobe Bryant's on like the guys that came in who watched Michael Jordan, bought his shoes, bought into the whole be like Mike commercial. Like that's their legend, their hero. And then they get into the NBA. They do great things. And I'm, I'm not just talking about Kobe. I'm talking about everybody else from then on who grew up inspired by LeBron – or sorry, by Michael Jordan. And to have their their legend tell them, mm, I'm not impressed. You didn't win six rings. It's kind of disappointing. Like, come on, Jordan. Not everything has to be about you. Not everything has to be about what you did. I think him saying, oh, they didn't win six rings, that's a little – I don't know. It seems a little – trite it seems a little like passive aggressive I, I don't know what the word is i'm looking for here it escapes me at 6 30 in the morning but it just seems petty that's the word i'm looking for it seems petty all right how hard is I, it to say yeah man winning or getting 31 games in a row scoring 30 points or 30 games in a row scoring 30 that is impressive that's that is james hard man he, what a great basketball player what a great ambassador for our league uh, i'm it, it it makes me glad that we passed the torch on to some really great NBA players. How hard is that? Uh, he could have said that, but those words don't make headlines, right? It's it's him I mean, does Jordan saying need six it? championships. Yeah, no, you're right. He doesn't need it. The only place I'm going to disagree with you, Chris America, is that Jordan's a goat and nothing he does is wrong. And okay. that's, that's okay by me. You know, another guy I look up to in the NBA, 
Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna Ladbier- kind of leave this right. Oh yes, go ahead. You look you look up to everybody in the NBA because we're both short. Yeah, I'm actually pretty normal in the real world, but in the yes, NBA, you look um, up to everybody. I I would look up to everybody. This guy I really got to look up to, both in height and in I don't know him just being s- savage. Take a listen. And I'm pulling a Chris America this morning. Yes. There we go. Uh, Should have kicked the dot or take your dot or shoot it. Uh, I didn't think about the situation and us not having the time. Uh, I thought we had one. And then as soon as I shot it, I I looked and I was like, I'm 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 stupid. Uh, But uh, like I said, that's on me. I need to do a better job. Thanks, guys. And do right for you. Suck. Whoa, whoa, Joel Embiid, what are you doing, buddy? What was whoa. that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that what? at the end? I thought it was cow. censored. I thought the video was over. I was yeah, waiting for it... you to talk, and then I was like, did Ladbrook just say the referees beeping suck? Oh, look at that. So this guy, Joel Embiid, he's becoming one of my favorite superstars in the NBA because he does not hold back. One, I the first part of that little soundbite bite. I love how he's like, man, I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. I didn't do this. He's a little self-deprecating, but he's he's trying to just say, I'm taking responsibility. It wasn't my teammates. This is a loss that the Sixers didn't need. They lose to the Celtics, and it was a big game for them. And he took responsibility. He takes it off of all of his teammates, off of his coaching staff, and he says, it was me. But then at the end, he does the super troll and gives it to the referees also. Maybe he thinks the referees were partially at blame also, which I'm sure they were. Yes, Loudbeard, and they beat the Celtics, whom we've kind of been leaving for dead. Did they need the refs' help? Did you do you agree with Gian, or Giannis? Do you agree with Joel Embiid? Uh, probably. And I didn't get a chance to to watch this game. I saw some of the highlights. I don't know. I, I think the Sixers just didn't put their best game out there, and there were, were some critical mistakes. So I, I don't know if I could put it all in the refs. And I really I kind of don't like the excuse of the it's the refs' fault. We, we use that a little too much in professional sports. We talked about it, I mean, over and over and over again with that Saints call. The Saints had a chance to win it after a bad call, but they still didn't. But they want to blame it on the call. I think athletes are starting to get – more and more used to just blaming the referees. I mean, how many football games have we watched where the receiver gets barely touched and he gets up and he he does that symbol like he wants a a flag thrown and he throws his hands up in the air like, what the heck? Like, why do we care so much about bad calls? Why don't we just go out and play? And that's what Joel Embiid and the Sixers need to do is they need to go out and play. Now, I love him going and and throwing shade on the referees because it's fun and something to talk about. It's a good soundbite. But really... Come on, man. Grow up. Go out and play, and who cares how the refs are calling it? You just need to do your thing, and if you're better than the other team, you need to win and not blame anybody else. So that's what I say. So I also think the uh, the Sixers, they, they're lucky they have some time here, and they're in the East, so it's not like they're going to slip too far down trying to do this, but they've added pieces throughout the year, and it wasn't like they all came at once, and you know then they get a chance to gel. It was kind of like they were doing their thing for a little while, and then they get Jimmy Butler. And so they had to kind of work him into the mix, and now they're flowing, and now they have Tobias Harris. So now they got to go through another, like, growing period, another period where they got to build up that team chemistry before they can finally, you know, get it going. Now, a lot of people like to say that the Heat lost to the Mavericks because they didn't have that team chemistry. So, And they had a full season of their roster to kind of gel and get going. They had over 100 games to get to that point, or around over 90, let's put it that way, to get to that point, and they still couldn't beat the Mavericks. So, Loudbeard, do you think they can get this gelling chemistry thing figured out to where they can be a force in the playoffs, or does this need to simmer and set for another offseason, and then they'll be ready to go next year? No, I think they're going to be ready for a run in the playoffs. Uh, This is going to be... This is going to be a good team. They again, we talk about this gelling. I think this was just a, this was a close game. It, it was just a little bit of an outlier. They played really good. 
last night, and I just don't think that I, I just don't think this gelling thing really needs to take a lot of time. By playoff time, this team's going to be ready. They've got the talent. They've got the superstars. They're going to be ready. I think that gelling thing sometimes gets overplayed. And in the situation with the Heat back in 2011 when the Mavs took them to the schoolyard and beat them down, to me that didn't have anything to do with gelling. That was just, again, LeBron not having the eye of the tiger in the playoffs. And that, I mean, I'm, I'm a LeBron liker over here. I don't need to, to say that, but it was true. He didn't have what it took that playoff run, and that's why they lost. To me, this they're going to gel. Yeah, it does take some time to build that chemistry, but they're going to be just fine when it's playoff time. 76ers will be all right. And apparently this, uh, this episode is brought to you by Survivor. Survivor the band, and of course their hit, Eye of the Tiger. Yeah, we, I owe it to them, man. They, they're good people over there. Uh, I feel like that should be our new theme song. Yeah, definitely. So that was Chris our America. warm up song when I was on the wrestling team. That's what we warmed up to every single match, and I hated it. Oh, <laughs> just because I got old, it got it got tired. Like, come on, coach, can right. we change like, it up a little bit? Up. Switch like, it up. Yeah, I know that's you're a big Rocky fan. I know you like you're an '80s guy, but come on, coach, it's 2000. It's a new millennia. Yes, yes. So I'm gonna have to ask you this because it was posed on Twitter yesterday, Chris America. And we've been teasing it for a full day. I think it's time to come through with this tease. So on Twitter, at Scout Team Radio, you can hit us up. All the listeners out there, if you want to you want to interact with us, you want to get social, you want to maybe give us your commentary or your comments, if you want to tell Chris America how much you hate LeBron also, hit us up, at Scout Team Radio. Yesterday, a good listener of the show, longtime friend, Memphis Spence, hit us up, and he asked, which... Record is more impressive. Cal Ripken Jr.'s Iron Man streak, or was it the James Harden 30 points? And I want to give my answer right now, Chris America. But before I do that, I want to know, what do you feel? What is your answer on this question posed to us on our Twitter line? I think I have to go with Cal Ripken, Ripken, Ripken because of longevity of the streak. How long the streak lasted for, because... It was like, what, 2,000-plus games? We're talking 10-plus years? I don't know what the math is on that. Mo like, 15 years? How long did this streak go on for? Uh, like, it was a long time. It it was, I, I don't know the years in front of me. I want to say it was like 17 or something. It's a, it's a right. ridiculous amount of time. It is 15-plus years. So a lot can happen in 15 years, Loudbeard. 15 years ago, I was 20 years old. I wasn't even legally allowed to drink. So... There's been so many changes in my life. I've lived in Boston. I've lived in Maine. I've lived in Orlando. Throughout that time, I was in the Coast Guard. I've appraised houses. I've sold cars. Like, like The point is, a lot's changed in 15 years. My body is not the same that it was back in the day, Loudbeard. I was very a spry young lad 15 years ago. Now, I, I think I'm still pretty athletic. I could probably take I, – I beat my 14-year-old uh, my nephew in football last year. He challenged me to be uh, in a football game. He wanted to cover me at wide receiver. Couldn't do it. So, you know, I can still beat the youngins, but still just not as spry as I was, Loudbeard. So I'm going to go with Cal Ripken only because of how long that streak was. You can get hot for 30 days, but to be hot for 17-plus years, not getting injured, not changing any at all, not getting, you know, flushed out of the league by younger guys, that's it's impressive. That it is, and it's over 16 years is how long that streak went, where he did not miss a game. He got the the attendance record every year for the Baltimore Oriole, Orioles, so it was kind of nice. I have to agree with you, Chris America. Unfortunately, I hate agreeing with you, but when you're right, you're right. Cal Ripken Jr., his streak is by far better than that of what James Harden's doing, and that is not to diminish what James Harden is doing. James Harden is setting a phenomenal streak with scoring, and same thing with Russell Westbrook with his triple doubles. These are great streaks. But Chris America, I have to say, Cal Ripken Jr. is still going to be the best there. And I appreciate Memphis Spence for tweeting that out yesterday right before the end of the show. Make sure if you have any questions you want to pose to us here at Scout Team Radio, hit us up on that Twitter line. But with that being said, Chris America, it looks like it's about that time. You yeah, about ready for a little quick break? Yeah, unlike Cal Ripken Jr., we need a break. <laughs> 
Yeah, we have to take time off. And you know what? We also got to keep the lights on on the studio. So let's hear from a quick... Well, let's hear from our sponsors here. We'll be back in a quick minute. <laughs> wow. You're wow, having a Chris America kind man, of day. I'm having a hump day kind of day. What is going on? On the flip side, we might be talking about the eye of the tiger. Ring Central features all in one phone, messaging, and video conferencing. It's easy to use with unparalleled security. Ring Central simplifies things so you can grow. Call Ring Central to speak with a representative about a price for your growing business at 877 779 3860. Again, that's 877 779 3860. Hey everybody, it's your favorite patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis, so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then we replay from 11 to noon. I will see you there, and God bless America. Oh, hey there again. Welcome back to another Valentine's Day tip from Chris America, the gangster of love on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey, Chris, what do I get my girl for Valentine's Day? Well, if you're thinking chocolates and roses, stop being lame. She's been there. She's done that. What am I going to get, Miss America? What should you get your Valentine? A gift that spews romance and love. I'm talking about a Dyson vacuum cleaner, of course. A Dyson vacuum comes with a ball that makes it versatile, just like your love for each other. A ball is also round, just like your love is round. It has no beginning. It has no end. Your love will last forever, just like a ball. Go ahead and write that down, maybe on a Valentine's Day card. If you don't have a Valentine's Day card, just find one of the ones your kids took to school. Write it on Iron Man. She'll love it. Well... That wraps up another love tip from Chris America. Hope to see you again next time, and happy Valentine's Day. Oh, as always, I'm inspired by those love tips from Chris America. Those love tips are coming at you hot because we are just one day away from this beautiful Valentine's Day. Make sure you listen up. Get in that Dyson vacuum. You cannot go wrong. That's a great tip from Chris America. Once again, you are listening to Scout Team Radio. I am Loudbeard. On the other microphone, we have Chris America. We're bringing it to you hot this morning, as we do we each and every weekday morning at 6 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. We also replay at 11 on the radio station, and we're available on the Barn Burner Podcast Network, which gets played daily over there at the Barn Burner. Uh, we also have our own podcast. You can catch it at scoutteamradio.com or Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, anywhere you can find a podcast. And lastly, like I had mentioned before the break, make sure you get social with us. Hit us up on Twitter at Scout Team Radio. We also have a Facebook page and an Instagram page at Scout Team Radio. Check out all of those. Get social. Get interactive. Tell us how you're feeling. We may read your 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 thoughts on the air. It'll be great. It'll be harmonious. It'll be amazing. But with all that being said, Chris America, it's time to get back to the real sports talk. Sports talk in the morning with Loudbeard and Chris America on Scout Teams Radio. Yes. And in real sports talk, we now live in a world where we get information so quickly. Uh, Antonio Brown is out there, and he, he follows us on Twitter at Scout Team Radio. He also likes to tweet from time and time. And yesterday, Antonio Brown tweets... Thank you, Steeler Nation, for a big nine years. Time to move on and forward. Hashtag new demands. Wow. 
Yeah, he kind of painted himself and the Steelers into a corner, did he not? Yeah, but we knew this was coming, right? Are we surprised? Um, I'm not surprised he demanded the trade. I'm a little surprised he's counting his chickens before they hatched because he's not traded yet, and he has zero leverage to force this trade. This is true. Yep, he's on contract. I think he's got three additional years on his contract, so Pittsburgh doesn't have to do anything. And maybe that's the problem, Chris America. Maybe he's going to Pittsburgh, and they're kind of lukewarm on wanting to trade him. They're kind of like, eh, we'll see what we can do. And he's like, well, let me take it to the people. Let me be a man of the people, and let me put it out there so that the people know what my intentions are. So maybe that's leverage to help push the Steelers a little bit more to make this deal happen. Now, he's got two years left this year, next year. Oh, no, you're right, three years. I don't know a potential out into 2021. I don't know if that potential out is a player out or a team out. But either way, he's got at least two seasons locked in. And I don't is this considered cheap for a wide receiver 12 million this year and then 11 million next year? Honestly, I think he might be doing the Steelers a favor because his contract the way it was set up was he got paid 910,000, 915,000 the last two seasons. Now they're on the back end of his contract where they have to pay 12, 11, and then if they do pick up that fourth year option, it's 12 and a half. Yeah, I mean, he was on a good deal because he hadn't gotten to that performance level, but now his extension is kind of kicking in and he's going to get that bigger money. I don't know if it's a deal or not. If he goes to another team, they may want to restructure the deal, and this might be part of what he's wanting to do is maybe he's wanting to restructure for more money or bigger signing bonus or extension bonus or whatever he's trying to do. There's an angle here. Um, I also heard that his intentions is to go to be on a team where he's the man. He wants to go somewhere where it's, it's him. He values being the number one guy. And I think that Juju Smith Schuster took a little bit of his, spotlight and he didn't like that so he wants to go somewhere where he knows he'll be the man and Chris America I said it to you before the show we had a little sidebar and I told you I I made my declaration and now I'm doing it on air Antonio Brown will be a 49er by the time all of this is done I think this is where he wants to go he likes Kyle Shanahan he likes Jimmy Garofalo Janine Garofalo's cousin And he loves going out and being part of that Jerry Rice shadow, right? Like he wants to be the GOAT, and he wants to be a part of what the GOAT is doing. And Jerry Rice wants to bring him to San Francisco so he can be part of that legacy. And this is what Antonio Brown wants. I think he's not worried about the championships so much. He's not worried about all that noise. He wants to go out and be that number one guy and prove to the world that it's not the Steelers' system that it's him, and he's great no matter where he goes. So if you're the 49ers, then don't you proceed with caution if what you're saying is true? Because what happens when Kittle gets 10 receptions, 160 yards, and they don't throw the ball to Brown? Or they give Brown, like, four targets? Don't you think he's going to be like, man, I'm going to pull out my own T.O. card like he did when uh, we threw the ball to to that other guy? God, now I can't think of the. The t- Jason Witten, <laughs> Jason Witten, uh, I want the ball or I, or I want out. Well, Chris America, I would say, yeah, every team's going to have to proceed with caution, but if I'm looking there at San Francisco and I'm looking at what wide receivers are on this team, and there's some young talent there. It's not like it's Wait, devoid of talent. But There's Redskins legend Gear, Pierre Garçon. <laughs> yes, there is. There is Redskins legend Pierre Garçon. He is not going to be an issue. Um But I do think Antonio Brown is a huge upgrade for this team. Kyle Shanahan, after having a a bad season last year, I think he needs to bounce back. I mean, he's going to be on the hot seat if San Francisco comes out cold this season. You've got Jimmy G coming off of that, that bad injury. He should be coming back. San Francisco needs a big year. This is a, a pay to play year for San Francisco and they are going to do everything they can to upgrade. And I don't care which fan base you are, everybody right now would love 
to have AB on their team. Even if he brings that Diva card with him, everybody would love to have him on their team because he brings so much talent and he brings so much pizzazz and he brings just, oh man, if you came to my Washington Redskins, I would be jumping for joy. Would you be excited to have him for in Carolina, Chris America? Well, Loudbeard, I was going to say that uh, I do agree with your San Francisco 49ers take. He has made it known that that's where he wants to go. However... I already mentioned that there's the whole Kittle effect out there in San Francisco, and A.B. might not want that. So I got a better position or proposition for you here, Antonio Brown. Why don't you come on down to Charlotte, North Carolina, and play for the Carolina Panthers. Greg Olson, as great as he is, future Hall of Famer, love me some Greg Olson. He's not going to swallow up 10 passes in a game ever again. And if he does, it's like one game. It'll be a once in a once in a blue moon type of thing, because he gets injured a lot. He's not as spry as he used to be. He's like old Chris America, not a spry young lad anymore. And there's nobody else on this receiving core that the that the Carolina Panthers have that can take away your spotlight, Antonio Brown. So why don't you come on down? You're the next contestant on the Carolina, the Carolina Panthers are right for you. Come on down. Well, you just proved my point. Every fan base would love oh, to have yeah. him, including the Carolina Panthers. I, you're not the only Carolina Panther fan that would be jumping oh, for joy man, to get this a, guy. But again, we uh, don't have any other uh, any other guys that can steal his spotlight. And we've seen that another 5'11 wide receiver can do well. And Steve Smith Sr., remember all the things that he used to do down here in Charlotte, balling out, doing his thing for like 10 or 12 years. So come be the next. Come live in Steve Smith's shadow. Come Come beat all of his records, Antonio Brown. I bet you you can't do it. Wow, that's a heck of a challenge. Good thing Antonio Brown listens each and every morning at 6 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio so he can hear you, Chris America. He don't, knows. Don't tell him that... I'm doing like reverse psychology. Okay, I won't. I'll just keep it, keep it on the DL. All right, I'll keep it. I'll keep it quiet. Yeah, I bet uh, you can't do it, Antonio Brown. You can't. I bet you can't. I bet you can't. I know he can't either, especially if he comes to the Redskins. Break all those records. Yep, yep. I'm with you, Chris America. Thank you. All right, um, you always got my back. Appreciate you, bro. All right, Chris America. Moving on. Uh, we're gonna do. We're gonna go in two different directions here, and I'm not sure which one. I'm gonna let you pick, Chris America. Would you rather talk about college basketball or Major League Baseball? You tell me. Which one are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm still feeling some Major League Baseball. We got into some uh, good discussions on Twitter yesterday. Um. So I think everybody's on the Major League Baseball train. We're not quite in college basketball mode yet. All right. Well, we'll save the last three minutes for college basketball because yes. I got some good scores and stuff. But for now, we're going to talk a little bit about this Bryce Harper, Manny Machado situation. So right now, reports are swirling about Bryce Harper being part of a San Francisco Giants deal. So, the reportedly, they're, the Giants have put together an extremely lucrative short-term deal. And they're ready to offer this to, to Harper, and they're hoping that he will take it. So, the Giants right now are, are, are hot and heavy on Bryce Harper. But, apparently, Harper only wants that long-term deal. So, Chris America, I ask you, would you think that this is a smart move for Harper to turn down if there was a three- or four-year deal worth a ton of money would that be worth turning down, thinking that maybe he could get another big deal after this one expired? Or do you think he needs to go all in 10 years, long term, no matter what? Well, I think he's kind of in the um, the Le'Veon Bell situation, right? Except for his, his chances of being injured aren't that great, but his chances of having his game diminish, having his, his play go down. We saw lower production this past season. Am I wrong on that, Loudbeard? No, you're correct. So if that trend continues for two two seasons, three seasons, I don't know how long this short-term deal is, he's not going to get that next big contract where if he signs the 10-year deal, he's locked in, he's guaranteed, he's ready to go for the next 10 years. So now I don't know what his other offers are though because if he's getting I don't let, let's just make up numbers. Let's say he's got 3 years um you know, 90 million dollars. 3 years a hundred million dollars, maybe you start thinking I should take that deal. If your other offers are ten years, 
uh, I don't know. I guess twenty-seven and a half million dollars for ten years is a lot better than thirty-three million dollars for three years. Yeah, it mm-hmm. depends what that offer is, right? It depends where yeah. where that goes. But it sounds like Harper is dead set on doing this ten-year deal. Um, from the very beginning, he's been pretty vocal, or at least his camp has been and his agent has been about saying that he wants a deal better than Giancarlo Stanton. And Giancarlo Stanton had that $325 million deal. And this is where he's at. He's waiting right now for Machado's deal to happen because he's the type of guy that wants to be number one. So whatever Machado gets, he's going to say, oh, I need to one-up that. So he's waiting patiently for the Machado deal to happen. But teams like the Nationals, the Phillies, the White Sox have all been rumored to have offers over 10 year or at 10 years at 300 million plus but we don't know exactly what these offers are right it's all back backroom dealings that we have no idea so we're just assuming that this is what the deals are because it's what we're hearing from these sources and rumors but we don't know if that's the case or not so harper man he, he's waiting for that 10 year he's wanting 325 plus and i think that's his starting point and maybe those deals aren't that good right so I don't know if this is a good strategy for him or not. Yeah, I but have he's to waiting think nobody's, out Machado. I have to think nobody's offered him the highest paid deal of all time. That that we have to know because I feel like if they did, he'd be signed already. Unless he's wanting fifteen million over that mark, where teams are like, "Well, we'll give you ten years, three hundred and thirty million, but you want ten years, three hundred and fifty million. We're way far off." Yeah, that's I think where they're at. Now, I'm talking about Machado here, and the Padres all of a sudden jumped in, and they're getting aggressive with a deal for Machado. And it looks like it's going to be something that he's going to think about. And it could be one of these super huge 10-year deals. We're not sure because everything's a backroom dealing, and we don't know all the details. But according to sources, his camp, his close circle of, of friends are telling him, don't take a deal with San Diego, man. Don't You don't want to be out in San Diego for 10 years. Take a short deal. Go with the Yankees. Is this another one of those situations where it's just these big-time players all just want to go be a Yankee? Like, is that the pinnacle of being an athlete in the Major League Baseball world? Yeah, which I don't know. I guess I'm just different. I'm a guy that likes to build my own path, make, do it my own way, and I'd rather be the first guy to win a championship for Milwaukee than just be, or San Diego, or just be another guy who won it for the Yankees. That, that That's just how I am. But I guess I get it if you grow up watching the Yankees and you're a huge baseball fan and the Yankees are the mecca of baseball for whatever reason. I mean, I know, I know what the reason is. It's the most historic program in baseball history. But for me, man, I, I like paving my own path. I like being going to the beat of my own drum, doing my own thing, and becoming the legend, maybe that makes me a little bit of Antonio Brown, where I want to be the guy for a franchise rather than just another guy. Yeah, I'm with you. You, you. That's why you love LeBron James so much, because he went back to Cleveland and won them a championship after they didn't have a championship for so long, and he paved the way for future superstars to do the same, correct? Yeah, and then when he went to the Lakers, that kind of turned me off. I was like, oh, really? Yeah, you're just, just going to go be another Laker? Okay. Good point. Do your um, thing, player. Other teams uh, rumored to be interested in Machado or White Sox and Phillies. Uh, they have offers out there for them, supposedly. And this is just one of those deals, Chris America, where I was really feeling like, i feel feeling bad for these guys. They're not going to get their super contracts. But if the Padres are offering a deal to Machado, that's a great deal. But he's like, ah, I'd rather play for the Yankees. And Harper's sitting there thinking, no, you're not giving me enough money. You're giving me 10 years and $300 million plus, but it's not enough money. Is it maybe not that the the league is being cheap and the owners are being cheap? Is it more that these players have gotten so diva that they're willing to just wait until it's a offer that's too good to be true? I mean, I, at first I was kind of thinking, okay, the, the league's being smarter and they're being cheaper, but I don't think they are. I think these players are getting these offers. I think they're being selfish. That's what I'm saying, Chris America. I agree, and I, I think it could be more or less that they're getting fair offers and maybe they're not the Giancarlo Stanton offers or they're right at the Giancarlo Stanton offer and they're like, no, my pride tells me I need at least $1 million more than that. I want to have the headline that says highest paid player of all time. 
which I don't understand because then in three or four years, another player is just going to take that rank from you and you won't have it anymore. But I, I think eventually these guys got to decide, do I want to play baseball or not this year? Because, man, we're going into spring training and time goes by fast. You got to you gotta pull the trigger on one of these offers. I, I feel like you've gotten the best out of baseball. Eventually, these teams will just move on without you and can do well without you. True story, Chris America. And now it's sad. Ask, it's sad let, that it's gotten to that. Let me ask you this, Loudbeard. How, as a Nationals fan, how bad do you want Bryce Harper? Uh, he's been kind of the face of the franchise here for the past few years. He's a very likable guy. Good, good for the fans. But I also, I'm not a big. F- fan of my team overpaying for a guy and then it it hurting the franchise for years and years and years so I'm I'm indifferent man if they get them at a decent rate even if it's the 10 years 300 million I'm okay with that if they do like 350 or 400 million and then they can't pay any of the other players when they need to be paid then that and then you start losing talent and you become kind of washed up and sitting there in mediocrity because of one player I'm against that. I, I'm totally against it. So I, I don't like the guy enough where I have to say, unload the bus and, and give him all that money. I don't. It doesn't matter that much to me. Yeah, and I agree with you, man. I think as far as a fan goes for baseball, yeah, you, 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 those guys kind of become black holes where they suck up all the cash and you can't do anything with them. I mean, we looked at the Giants when they had Barry Bonds. I mean, they were an okay team, and they got a lot of publicity because he was cracking out home runs, breaking records and everything. But then the second he retired, what did the Giants do? They rattled off some playoff wins. They rattled off some championship wins. And it was because they finally had the money to go get more talent and build an actual team. That's 100% true. Now, another place that is a black hole, Chris America, I'm going to segue here, is Duke. This is a place where teams go in and they play against the Blue Devils and they do not come out alive. Ooh, solid Duke, segue. Duke last night. A plus. They they go into the second half of the game. They're they're shooting horribly. I think they were like two for twelve to start the second half. They end up going down by twenty three points against Louisville, and then all of a sudden they take they get hot. Chris America, when you have superstars that get hot at the right time, ten minutes left. All of a sudden, you make a monster comeback. Duke erases a 23-point second-half deficit, and they end up beating Louisville 71-69. to Number 16-ranked Louisville loses that huge lead in the second half. Now, Williamson scores 27 points last night, and this team, I'm telling you, there's just too much firepower. Duke's really pushing to get back to that number one spot. They're sitting at the number two seed. So they're they're pushing hard. They're still behind Tennessee. Tennessee's solid at number one. And then Gonzaga's sitting there on their heels at number three. Now, another exciting game last night, Chris America. No, I, I lied. It wasn't that exciting. But number six, Michigan. They're going up against Penn State. You know, where the, we've yep. got the conference games going. And you were really high on this Michigan squad. Mm-hmm. Man, if they're going up against an unranked Penn State squad, they should have squished them, right? They should have, but they didn't. No, they didn't. 75-69. to 69. And Sorry, Chris America. Michigan, Michigan, their losses, I believe, have all come on the road. And if you listen to the College Credit Hour here on 12 Ounce Sports Radio at noon, you know Memphis Pence is a big fan of how do you do on the road. And Michigan's losses on the road make them look like they might not be a contender. But... I'm not going to I'm not I'm going to die on this hill loudbeard. Michigan is still my team to beat. All right, I love it. I love it. Uh other action last night, number 19 LSU upsets number 5 Kentucky in a buzzer beater. The LSU Tigers they drive down. There's a quick lay-in that's contested that misses, but there's a a tip in. The LSU player tips it in at the buzzer for a win upsetting number 5 Kentucky and other action, Maryland, they're going up against number 12, Purdue, and they upset number 12, Purdue, 70-56. to 56. 
So we had a lot of action last night in college basketball. I'm using this as a warm-up, Chris America. I'm getting us warmed up because March Madness is right around the corner, and we need to get ready. We need to get excited. And all this action last night in college basketball, it's starting to get me pumping. It's getting my blood pumping. And March Madness is probably the most exciting time of the sports season because it's just mayhem and chaos and I love chaos, Chris America. Oh, we do love chaos, Lodbert. If we were warming up, we should have been playing Eye of the Tiger because that's what you do when you warm up. You play Eye of the Tiger. But like Rocky, this episode is knocked out. You have the Eye of the Tiger, Chris America. You do. Ah, thank you for saying that, Lodbert. I can go about my Wednesday, the February the 13th, and take on the man with the machete. <laughs> I'm just rambling on. 